Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. Uh, this uh, video module is going to be on the inefficiency of, of monopoly. In the previous uh, video module, we undertook a graph, a study of a graph uh, that looked something like this one. It was certainly it, it has been uh, cleaned up. What we noted is that a monopolist will produce where marginal cost is equal to uh, marginal revenue, which is the rule that all firms are going to follow. It's going to weigh off the marginal revenue by this that's on this curve of each unit with the marginal cost on this one, and it's going to continue to produce so long as the marginal revenue points are above the points on the marginal cost curve. So it will go up to Q1. It's not going to go beyond Q1 uh, because the marginal cost is then going to be greater uh, than the uh, marginal uh, revenue. Uh, in this video module, we want to extend our discussion and talk about the inefficiency uh, of monopoly. The inefficiency can, in fact, be described in a graph that looks like this. That is, the monopoly will charge a price of PM. All I've done is taken out the uh, average total cost curve. will charge a price of PM to sell quantity QM. Now, in a perfectly competitive market, the price will be uh, PC with a quantity of QC. The reason is that in a perfectly competitive market, this is going to be equal to the uh, supply curve. And of course, uh, the price is going to settle at the intersection of the supply uh, and the demand curve. Now, this means that under um, monopoly, uh, the price is going to be higher, the quantity sold is going to be lower, and that, of course, is something uh, that people might not like about about monopoly, but do recognize that a monopoly is not unconstrained in its pricing decision. Some people think that a monopoly can charge anything it wants. Well, it can, I guess, but if it does, uh, then it will not be maximizing profits. If a firm charges this kind of price, uh, P1, uh, then it will be losing out on profits. Its stock price will suffer. Some savvy entrepreneurs will buy the firm and, and actually lower the price uh, to price. Uh, PM uh, profits can go up, the stock price can go up, and those those uh, savvy investors can make uh, can make money. Now, the, in other words, the monopolist is constrained by by market demand, and it is constrained by its uh, cost structure. In the main, its marginal uh, cost of production. Now, there's something else we can say about monopoly, and that is that monopoly is inefficient. And the reason it is inefficient. Uh, in, is that the marginal value of each of these units between QM and QC, the marginal value of each of these units is greater than the uh, marginal cost of, of producing uh, those units. And that is, if in fact the monopolist were to expand production to QC, consumers would get greater value out of each one of these units than it would cost uh, the monopolist to produce those units. Uh, consumers would get a total value equal to uh, of these units, QM to QC, equal to QM, A, uh, B, uh, QC. In producing these units, QM to QC, the monopolist would incur marginal costs equal to these quantities here. You add up those marginal uh, quantities and you get a total cost of producing QM to QC equal to QM, uh, C, B, uh, Q, C. So we have total value of all of these units equal to this uh, area here, Q, M, A, B, Q, C. We have a total cost of these units equal to Q, M, C, B, Q, C. The value exceeds the cost by the, this triangular area uh, here. And since uh, consumers do not get that triangular area, we refer to this as an inefficiency uh, of monopoly. It's also referred to as deadweight loss, and it is also referred to as the Harburger uh, Triangle. This is what can be gained if, in fact, uh, the monopolist were to expand production from QM to QC. It is all that can be gained on balance, too, if uh, the monopolist is prosecuted by the antitrust uh, uh, authorities and forced to uh, produce at uh, QC. And it could very well be that the cost of antitrust enforcement or cost of regulating this monopoly could easily be greater than this uh, triangular area, ABC, which means 
uh, that the monopolist uh, should be uh, left alone. Now the monopolist is not going to produce QM to QC simply because it is going to be weighing off its additional cost uh, equal to these points here against its additional revenue equal uh, to these points uh, here. The additional revenue to the monopolist of producing QM to QC is equal to QM, C, uh, D, uh, QC. Its additional costs would be QM, C, B, uh, Q, uh, C. Uh, so its costs would be greater than its additional revenue and the monopolist would therefore uh, be reducing uh, its, its profits. Now you might think that the consumers could buy off uh, the monopolist. That is, the consumers get this much in additional value, the monopolist would incur this much in additional uh, costs, and the consumers could gain ABC. Well, they could give up part of the ABC to the monopolist. That is, more than cover the additional cost of producing QM to QC. Uh, the problem there, however, is that the consumers have a real uh, <coughs> free rider uh, problem. That is, they can all get together and say, hey, we can, uh, we can be better off if we get the monopolist to expand production from QM to QC, uh, and we will get all of these uh, benefits, uh, but each individual uh, consumer can probably say, my, my um, uh, contribution to getting the monopolist to expand production can be so small that I need not make it, and as a consequence, uh, the monopolist uh, might not be persuaded to move from QM uh, to QC. Uh, here we have a, a lesson. It's oftentimes said that the monopolist is the, is the force of restricting uh, output, and therefore uh, it is the monopoly that's the cause of the inefficiency. Uh, we've just demonstrated that one of the problems of the in, for the inefficiency is that consumers can't get together and buy off uh, the monopolist, uh, and they can't do so at a reasonable uh, cost. Uh, thank you for being with me.